The Musi.Live whiteboard is one of the most versatile tools that we have on our platform. Just like everything else, it can be used in person, online, or in hybrid situations. The cool thing about the whiteboard is it's fully interactive, both in a lesson and when you assign it as homework or just share it to the students outside of a lesson. They have full control to go in at any time and write and draw on the whiteboard, unless you lock it, of course, which we'll get into in a second. But basically, when you're creating a whiteboard, you'll be given the option to create either a private or a public whiteboard. Now, this is an important distinction because you can't change this once you've chosen. If you're teaching a one-on-one -on -one lesson, I would recommend selecting private whiteboard. That just means that if you ever share that whiteboard with another student, they will not see any of the notation or anything that the other student has put on that board. It means all the annotations are private. If you make a public whiteboard, then everything is public. If you share a whiteboard with more than one people that is public, sorry, more than one person that is public, then all of the changes made by anybody will be seen by everybody. Public whiteboards are really great in a group class because you can create one whiteboard that everybody sees and interacts with, or in a group class, you can create a, a private whiteboard where each member of the group has their own copy of the board. The cool thing about private whiteboards in a group class is the teacher has a filter so they can select which student they're looking at and you can interact with the whiteboard and just that student's uh, work. So it's a great way of sort of privatizing the content in a group lesson. But for our purposes, we'll just click private. Uh, one thing to note is the layout of the whiteboard is identical in public and private. So this from here on out is exactly the same. The only difference, of course, is if you share a whiteboard with multiple people, you'll have a little drop down menu here so you can see which version of the whiteboard you're looking at. For the whiteboard, you have an area at the top to rename. So you can name your whiteboards and just makes it a little bit easier to find them when you need them again in the future. At the bottom of the screen, you have your standard whiteboard tools these are your things like your drawing tools, your music, uh, sorry, your drawings, your circles, your squares, your text tool, all that kind of stuff. Pretty typical whiteboard um, notation items. You've got your color palette down here too, uh, your drag tool. You can add images to the whiteboard from here. This basically just opens the file manager that you have. This is not for uploading templates. This is for uploading like notation or individual elements that you might want to use on the whiteboard. We have hundreds of preloaded uh, items already, but if you wanted to go in here and maybe pick out um, some random item, hit save, and this will bring it up into the whiteboard. Now, as I mentioned, this is not the way to put a template in the board because um, this is sort of an image, not a background. But it's really great if you have your own notation items or anything like that that you want to upload, you can just do that right from here. You also have your, erase, uh, your eraser, so you can just click on any of the elements that are on screen and those will delete. You'll also notice that in the left, you have your different tools. At the very top here, you'll have your notation menu. This has pretty much everything you'll need uh, for writing and engaging in the whiteboard. Your students also have this menu, so they can go in as well and grab any of these items. As you see, these are colored because they are tied to the color that I selected on the palette here. If you want to change the color, what you can do is actually click on the element and then select the color palette, and then you can just change the color, and only that specific element will change. It's really nice if you're drawing like a scale and want to highlight the third or the sixth or seventh or something. Um, it's a really nice way of making that efficient. You also have the ability to duplicate elements. So you can just click the plus button and that will duplicate. And you have the delete button to delete a specific element. On the side here, you also have your template menu. Students don't have this. So this is a teacher only feature. From here, you have all of the resources that we preload. So we've preloaded uh, probably about 20 different templates for you. So you can grab any of those and just pop them in as the background. 
everything we've got in the template and notation menu are sized appropriately, so you shouldn't need to resize anything. You can, of course, if you want to, uh, but they should just fit right away. The other thing that is really useful about the whiteboard, and maybe probably the best feature, is from the template menu, you can click My Templates and Files. This will show you any of the recently used files. So anything that you've uploaded into the whiteboard in the last couple of lessons will show here. It's really good uh, if you're doing things repetitively throughout the day. Uh, you can just refer back to that and bring in resources without going through the whole file system. But as you saw, I can also just click New, and we can go in here to our file system and find you know, anything we want and bring that into the whiteboard. So in this case, I'll just grab this piece of music, hit open. You can see that it's populated into my recents list and is populated as the background of the whiteboard. It didn't delete my notation. It just removed the whiteboard background. So I can go ahead and delete those. I'm uh, just clicking the delete key on my computer, which also deletes the items. Uh, also on a computer, control C and control V will copy and paste. Uh, this is touch friendly, so if you have an iPad or any touchscreen device, you can use your Apple Pencil or your finger or, you know, anything like that. That works as well. But from here, you can see we've got our piece of sheet music uploaded into the into the whiteboard. We've got our tools. I'm going to grab maybe a highlighter. Maybe we're going to talk about, you know, some of these notes and chords. And as I said earlier, these auto save. So let's say the lesson ends and this is as far as we got. I can just close this whiteboard and we can reopen this at any time to continue working. The student can also open this at any time and continue working on it. So if you'd like to assign it as homework or put it in an assignment, uh, students can use those as interactive resources when they're not in a class. Um, if you don't want your student to change anything on the whiteboard, you can click the padlock and then you have options to lock the whiteboard. You can global lock, which just means the student can't do anything at all. They can't write on it or draw on it in any way. They can't move anything. Or you can put student lock, which means that they can still draw and write their own things, but they cannot delete anything that the teacher has put on the whiteboard. So it just depends what kind of content you're creating or what it is you actually need your students to do. It could be like a game that you want them to play or maybe a worksheet that you need them to fill out. And if you've written instructions, you might want to put the student lock on so that way they don't accidentally delete your instructions um, or delete maybe some of the notation items on screen. So it just depends. However, you're, you're teaching, it's, it's up to you. Uh, but those are your lock options. Uh, the last option here too is clearing the whiteboard. So if you click that and confirm, it will clear the entire board. So that's just a quick way of getting rid of everything. In a lesson, as I said before, everything is fully interactive. So your students have full access to this whiteboard during their classes. Um, just like all the other tools, you'll find this in the tools menu. And then under whiteboard, you'll even see the whiteboard that we used earlier. And we can create new whiteboards from here, both public and private. So uh, actually, you can also organize your content in your, in your whiteboard management. Uh, by either clicking on name, and it'll organize them by names. You can organize by the date. You can organize by where they're stored. You can even toggle this to show only the shared content versus all of the whiteboards. So if you don't want to see everything, you can just turn that on. Um, but as you can see, at any point, you can just double click the whiteboard. It will open up. Of course, this one's now blank because we just deleted everything off of it. Um, but if we didn't delete everything, the content would still be there. Um, yeah, and one cool thing about the whiteboard too is when you're in the whiteboard, and this applies to pretty much every tool on our platform, but you can go into the whiteboard, you can click the little map icon, and it'll give you a tour of the whiteboard and point out all the tools and explain basically what it is that those do. If you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat support. Uh, we're always there, happy to answer any anything that you might need. And of course, have a good day. Thank you.